Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at quadratic functions and their graphs. So the first thing we're going to look at are some of the characteristics of a quadratic functions graph, which are called par it's called a parabola. We're also going to look at how to graph parabolas and then how do you find the minimum or maximum value of a quadratic function and then applications involving maximum and minimum values. So the first thing we're going to look at is the definition. A quadratic function is a function where the highest power of x is 2. So we've seen quadratic equations in the last chapter and we solved quadratic equations using four different methods. In this section it's about quadratic functions f of x represents function notation and you have ax squared plus bx plus c this is called general form which we have seen before the a the coefficient in front of the x squared cannot be zero otherwise it would be a linear function because you would have bx plus c only and now we're going to look at some of the applications involving graphing quadratic functions. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola and the shape of the graph is either a cup or a frown shape or the book calls it a bowl instead of a cup or inverted bowl if it was a frown. So let's talk about the shape of the graph. If the graph opens up then the graph will look like a cup shape. And a way to figure this out is if the a, the coefficient in front of the x squared, is positive. If the graph opens up, then you have a lowest point on the graph. And for a parabola, this is called the vertex. In this case, it's a minimum point or lowest point. And you also have a parabola is symmetric where this is the symmetry line. It goes right through the vertex. It's a vertical line. And this is called the axis of symmetry. Which we're going to abbreviate AOS, axis of symmetry. So this is for a quadratic function that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c and the leading coefficient is a positive number in front of the x squared. On the other hand, if the graph opens down, then the vertex is now the highest point on the graph and it's a maximum point. If the graph opens down, you can think of it as it's down as a frown shape graph. And you also still have the axis of symmetry that go, it's a vertical line passing through the vertex. And this is for any quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c, where the a is less than zero, it's negative. So this, we gain all this information by just knowing the shape of the parabola, whether it's up or down. We know there's a minimum if it's opening up, there's a maximum if the graph's opening down. And that's all determined by whether A is negative or positive. So now we're going to look a little bit more in depth about what's called the vertex. The vertex for a parabola is also sometimes called the turning point because you will have exactly one turning point in a parabola. It's the lowest point if the parabola opens up, which we've just talked about. So this is called the vertex. And this is if it's opening up. you are decreasing on the left side of the vertex and on the right side of the vertex 
the graph is increasing. And as we said before, the vertex is a relative or local minimum. And we talked about maximum and minimum values a couple chapters ago. The minimum is always the y value. Always. If you're talking about decreasing and increasing intervals, those are x values. On the other hand, if the graph opens down, then the vertex is a highest point, which is called the relative or local maximum. Okay, the maximum is still y value. And this time the graph is increasing on the left side of the vertex and decreasing on the right side. Okay. But in either case, you still have this axis of symmetry that's like a symmetry line for the vert or for the parabola called the axis of symmetry. So that's all the background information about the characteristics. We're going to start graphing quadratic functions now. Okay, a quadratic function is in standard form. The book likes to call it standard form. I usually call it vertex form, so I listed both of them in the notes. f of x equals a parentheses x minus h all squared plus k. Don't forget about the square. That's what makes it quadratic function. So this is a quadratic function that is in standard form. Now why this is so important is that standard form tells you where the vertex is without actually graphing. And it also tells you the shape of the graph without actually having to graph it. So keep in mind, a cannot be zero, otherwise it's not a quadratic function. So how do you look at this and just go, where's the vertex? The vertex is always a point where the x-coordinate is the h, the number h, and the y-coordinate is the k. Always. So whatever's following a subtraction inside the parentheses, that's the x-coordinate. And whatever's being added outside the parentheses, that's the y-coordinate. If it's if the quadratic function is in standard form, that's the vertex. The number a still determines the shape. If it's positive, the graph opens up. If it's if the a is negative, the parabola opens down, just like before. The other thing we haven't talked about yet is how does the value of a affect the shape even further. If you have a really small number in absolute value, so if you take the a, take the absolute value, and it's really small, really close to zero, the graph will be flat towards the x-axis. So it'll look like the graph is very wide if it's a really small number a in absolute value. If the number is really large in absolute value for A, then the graph is going to look really skinny. It's going to open very sharply away from the x-axis. It's going to look very skinny in that case. Okay, so now how do you graph quadratic functions that look like standard form? There's a few steps. You always start with the shape. Determine if the graph opens up or down. And the A determines whether it opens up if it's if the a is positive or down if, if the a is negative. So once you have the shape, then you have so many characteristics already. One of the characteristics that we've talked about is the vertex. The vertex is h comma k. It's a point. The x coordinate is the number h and k, the y coordinate is the number k. And you should be able to look at the quadratic function and determine what's the x-coordinate and what's the y-coordinate. 
once you have the vertex, then we need more points to graph. And you can obtain more points by finding the x-intercepts by making the y value 0 in the function. So if you take the function in standard form and you make the y value 0, then it becomes this. a times x minus h all to the second plus k. Your quadratic function becomes a quadratic equation because we replace the f of x with 0. So which method of the four that we've talked about before would be the best way to solve for x when it's inside the parentheses it's being squared? Right, you want to use the square root property. So solve for x using the square root property. Make sure you remove the plus or minus when we do the square root property. Once you have the x-intercepts, there can be at most two solutions to a quadratic equation. So there will be at most two x-intercepts. Once you have those, find the y-intercept. Where the graph crosses the y-axis, you can find those by making the x zero. So once you have the vertex, you have your x-intercepts, if there are any, and you have the y-intercept. Plot your points and connect them with a smooth curve that looks like a bowl, a cup, or an inverted bowl, a frown. And don't forget, you can also use the symmetry if you need additional points. The symmetry, axis of symmetry, has an equation, x equals h. It's a vertical line, so it has to be x equals and it's always the x-coordinate of the vertex. Keep in mind, it's not actually part of the graph, though. It's just an imaginary symmetry line. All right, so with all those steps in mind, let's try example one. We are going to graph the quadratic function in standard form, negative 3 times x minus 2 all squared plus 3. All right, first step, find the shape or determine the shape of the parabola. So what determines the shape? What number? Right, the a equals negative 3, which is negative. So the graph, the parabola, should open down as a frown shape. That already tells us so much about the graph. The vertex will be a maximum point and the symmetry will go through the vertex. Number two, find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. The vertex, if this is in standard form, and it is, you should be able to look at this quadratic function and determine where the vertex is. The vertex is h comma k. It looks like what's following a subtraction sign inside the parentheses is 2. So h is 2, and what's being added outside the parentheses is 3. So that's the k. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, so x equals, don't just write the number, it's x equals because it's an equation, it's always the x-coordinate, so 2, x equals 2. So number 3, once we have the vertex, we need more points, so find the x-intercepts. And y intercept. Okay, x intercepts. Let's do those first. 
there could be no x-intercepts or one or two, at most two. You find those by, by making y equals zero in the function. So zero equals negative three times x minus two all squared plus three. Now this becomes a quadratic equation, and we've talked about this before. The best way to solve this is a is using the quadrant or the square root property. So subtract three on both sides first. You need to isolate the squared expression. So divide both sides by negative three. Next, one equals x subtract two all to the second. Now take the square root to cancel out the square power. And remember your plus or minus. You want to make sure you include all possible x-intercepts. So that cancels out. x minus 2 equals square root of 1 is 1, so plus or minus 1. So this gives us two different equations. x minus 2 equals 1 x minus 2 equals negative 1, so that means we have two x-intercepts. Looks like x equals 3, or x equals 1. So 1 comma 0, 3 comma 0. That's where the graph will cross the x-axis. Now find the y-intercept. You will always have a y-intercept, and always exactly one y-intercept. Make the x equal to zero in the function, which would be negative three, zero minus two, all to the second, plus three. So it looks like, if you simplify this, negative two in parentheses squared is four, times negative three, negative 12, plus three, negative nine. So this is zero comma negative nine. So we found the vertex, we found the x-intercepts, we found the y-intercept. So we have four points so far. All right, so now we're ready for the next step. Fourth step is to find the domain and the range of the quadratic function. So I'm gonna write down the quadratic function again so we can look at it, negative three, times x minus two all to the second plus three. Remember that the domain are all the x values that you can substitute in and find a y value. There is no possible way to divide by zero when you substitute in the x, or you're never going to take the square root of a negative number. So the domain is all real numbers, negative infinity, negative infinity to infinity. This is true for any quadratic function. It will always be the set of all real numbers. The range are all the y values that the graph makes, or the graph makes up of the function. This, we actually need to know the shape. So the graph was opening down, like we said before, because the a is negative. And that gives us a highest point on the graph, which was the vertex, 2 comma 3. So it looks like the y values go from negative infinity up to no higher than 3. And a bracket on 3 because it is the vertex. It's included. Okay, number 5. Find out the intervals of increasing and decreasing. This is also coming from the shape that we've, as we've seen before. The graph is increasing on the left side of the vertex. So it's increasing for all x values from negative infinity until two. Make sure you use the x values. Decreasing from two to the right forever, so infinity. Once you have those first five steps, then you're ready to graph. So step six is to Plot the points 
and sketch a smooth curve. Alright, so plot the vertex first. It was at 2 comma 3. Right there. Make sure you label the points as well. Plot the x-intercepts. We had one x-intercept at 1 comma 0, and the other one was at 3 comma 0. And then we also had a y-intercept of negative 9. Right there. 0, negative 9. Keep in mind that the graph should be symmetric, and the symmetry line was x equals 2. That passes right through the vertex. Axis of symmetry. And so the graph should look like this. Smooth curve passing through your points. The highest point should be 2 comma 3. And then it turns and passes through the other x-intercept and goes down as you go to the right. So this should be the graph of negative 3, x minus 2, all squared plus 3. So I hope that those six steps helped as we graph the function. Okay, so now that is graphing quadratic functions in standard form. Now we're going to graph quadratic functions that are in general form. Okay, general form is not the same as vertex or standard form. St um, general form, we've seen earlier in this section, it looks like this. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's general form. The disadvantage of having general form is that you cannot look at this function and determine the vertex. It's not A, it's not B, it's not C. There's no way to look at this and say that's the vertex. But it does have some advantages. So here's how we can graph. We can still determine the shape of the graph by using the A. We've talked about that before. But you can also find out the vertex using a formula if the function's in general form. The x-coordinate is negative b divided by 2a. And you get the b from the coefficient in front of the x. The a is the coefficient in front of the x squared. Once you have the x-coordinate, substitute it into the function to find the y-coordinate, just like you would any y-coordinate. So x-coordinate, make sure you know this. Negative b over 2a is the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate is found by substituting the x-coordinate into the function. So just using the notation before, vertex was h comma k. The h is negative b over 2a. The k is found by substituting in negative b over 2a, whatever that number is, into the function. So we, as we've seen before, once you have the vertex and you know the shape, that's pretty much everything you need to graph. So here are the steps to graph a quadratic function in general form. Determine the shape, just like before, the graph the parabola opens up or down. If A is positive, opens up. If it's A is negative, opens down, just like before. The vertex we just talked about, there's a formula. The x-coordinate is negative B over 2A. The y-coordinate is found by substituting in the x-coordinate into the function. Find your x-coordinate 
intercepts to get more points on the graph by making the y value 0, which gives you this equation. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This is a quadratic equation. Which method do you think you should use to solve for x? Right. If you can factor easy, factor it. If you cannot factor easily, use the quadratic formula to solve for x. And we talked about those methods before in the last chapter. The y-intercept, you make the x equal 0. And this is one of those, the advantages of having general form. If you substitute in 0 for the x, a times 0 squared, that's 0. b times 0, that's 0. It looks like the y-intercept is always the number c. Always. So once you have the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the vertex, and the shape, connect the points with a smooth curve. All right, so let's try an example of graphing quadratic functions in general form. Okay, example two, the same six, six steps as we did before. Just a different function. This time it's in general form. Negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 8. This is a quadratic function, but it's not in standard form or vertex form. It's in general form this time. So a is negative 3, b is 6, c is 8. Which of the numbers determines the shape? Exactly. So a is negative 3. That determines the shape of the parabola, which is the first step. If a is negative 3, the graph is going to open down again. So you'll have a frown-shaped graph. Step 2. Determine or find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. This is where we have to actually do the formula, the use the formula to find the vertex. You can't look at the function and say the vertex is six comma eight or negative three comma six. It's it's not doesn't work like that. The vertex is h comma k, the h, which is the x-coordinate, opposite of b, divided by 2 times a. So opposite of 6, negative 6, 2 times a, which is 2 times negative 3, the x-coordinate is 1. Now to find the y-coordinate, substitute 1 into the function negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 8. And this will turn out to be 11. So the vertex is 1 comma 11, which we know is going to be the highest point on the graph. The axis of symmetry is x equals, because it's a vertical line, 1. So there's the symmetry line. All right, step 3. Once we have the vertex, find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept. Alright, x-intercepts. Make the y value 0 and solve for x. 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 8. Alright, so like I said before, the way to solve for x, try factoring first, 
If it's easy to factor, if not, go straight to the quadratic formula. This would involve the AC method to factor. So let's go straight to the quadratic formula. x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared subtract 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a. Okay, so we've already identified a, b, and c. b was 6, so negative 6 plus or minus square root b squared is 6 squared minus 4 times a, negative 3 and c was 8 divided by 2 times a, which was negative 3. So x equals negative 6 plus or minus square root. If you calculate what's inside the square root, it comes out to be 132 divided by negative 6. Now, don't cancel the negative 6s. You need to simplify the square root first. which I don't think it actually simplifies. 2 goes in 132 61 times, or 60, 66 times. So 132 is 2 times 66, and 66 is 2 times 33, and that's how it factors. So you can pull out a 2, but that's it. Negative 6, plus or minus, um, 2 square root of 33 all over negative 6. So there's a 2 in common with negative 6, negative 6, and 2. So cancel each of the coefficients by a factor of 2. Okay, so we have our x-intercepts. This doesn't help us graph, though. We need to figure out where are these approximately at on the x-axis. So one of the x-intercepts is negative 3 plus square root 33 over negative 3, which is about approximately something. The other x-intercept with a subtraction, square root, and that's approximately something. So let's put this in the calculator. Make sure you put parentheses around the numerator. You want those added or subtracted before you divide. So negative 3, oops, parentheses negative 3, plus square root 33. Close the parentheses on the numerator, divided by negative 3. So the first x-intercept is about negative 0 0.91. And then the other x-intercept is with a subtraction approximately 2.91. That gives us a much better idea of where these are on the x on the x-axis. Okay, one more thing. Find the y-intercept, which is when x equals 0. But we've talked about this before. If the quadratic function is in, is in general form, the c is always the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 8. 0, 0,8. Okay, so we have all the characteristics of the graph. Now we just need to determine the domain and range, increasing and decreasing, and then we're ready to graph. Let's put that up here. Number four. Find the domain and range. Domain, we talked about before, negative infinity to infinity. That's true for any quadratic function. Range, the graph was opening down, and the highest point is the vertex which we found out was 1 comma 11. So negative infinity until 11 bracket. Number five, 
increasing and decreasing intervals. The graph is increasing on the left side of the vertex, so negative infinity, until x equals 1. Decreasing on the right side of the vertex, 1 to infinity. And now we're ready to graph. Keep in mind the graph will open down, but the highest point is at 1, 11. So you want to make sure that that point will fit on the graph. So the vertex was at 1, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Vertex. We had x-intercepts at 2.91, so almost 3, 2.91, comma 0, and negative 0.91, so almost negative 1, almost, negative 0.91, comma 0, x-intercept, and then we had a y-intercept of 0, comma 8. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so now there's a symmetry line that goes through the vertex. x equals 1. Axis of symmetry. And the graph will open down and be a smooth curve that passes through your points and goes no higher than the vertex. And this is the graph that we were looking for. It is negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 8. So I hope that these six steps have helped you figure out how to graph a quadratic function in general form. It's pretty much the same work except finding the x-intercepts you may have to factor or use a quadratic formula. And to find the vertex you need to remember the x-coordinate is negative b divided by 2 times a. Okay, so once we have the graphing down we are ready to find out how to find the maximum or minimum value without actually graphing. Which has some really nice applications for quadratic functions that come up in real life. So you have a quadratic function. It might be in general form. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So these are the ones we were just finished graphing. We already know the shape. If a is positive, the graph opens up. If a is negative, the parabola will open down. Well, that tells us whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. If the graph opens up, the vertex is the lowest point. We've seen that before. If the graph opens down, the vertex is the highest point or a maximum. So let's try example three. We're going to find, is this function going to have a maximum or a minimum value? What is the maximum or minimum? And where does it occur, but without graphing? Okay, so this function, quadratic function, is in general form a is equal to negative 3, b is the number in front of the x, which is a 6, 
and C is negative 13. So what's the shape of the graph? Down. Open, the graph opens down because the A is negative 3. So which, one, which type of vertex are we going to have? Is it a maximum or a minimum? Maximum. So we are looking for the maximum value. for this function. There is no minimum value because the graph goes down forever towards negative infinity. Alright, so now how do you find the maximum without graphing? The maximum will be at the vertex. So we have a way to find out the vertex without graphing. The vertex, if the function is in general form, the x coordinate is opposite of b divided by 2a. So negative 6 divided by 2 times a looks like it'll be 1 again. x equals 1. And then find out the y coordinate, k, is substituting 1 into the function. And this will give us the y value which is negative 10. So what is the maximum value? The, ma the maximum or a minimum, if it was a minimum, is always the y value. So the y value is negative 10. That is the maximum. It doesn't seem like it would be the maximum because it's so small, it's really negative. But that's the highest y value on the graph. And where does it occur? The maximum is at x equals 1. So we've talked about this in chapter 1. If you talk about the location, those are the x values. So where does it occur at? x equals 1. The y value is the maximum or the minimum. And this time it's a maximum. And we didn't even have to graph. Alright, so how can we use this idea with applications? Here's one application. Many problems that involve finding the maximum or minimum of a quadratic function are called optimization problems. Because you want to find the optimal value the maximum value or the minimum value. Maximizing revenue, minimizing cost, maximizing area, minimizing surface area, those are called optimization problems. So example four, a farmer has 100 yards of fence, so they have all four sides they want to enclose for their farm. They have 100 yards for the perimeter. What are the dimensions of the field that gives you the most area? Okay, so if there is not a diagram given or a figure, you would draw a rectangle, because this is a rectangular field. X is representing the length of the field. Which is in yards. And the other side, the width, they're calling 50 minus x. Which is also in yards. To find out where the maximum, the most area or the maximum area is, you need to find the vertex. But we need to have a quadratic function first. We want to maximize area. So what's the area of this rectangle? Length times width. X times 50 minus X. If you distribute and simplify 50X subtract X squared, this is a quadratic function. 
that represents area. So where does the maximum occur? The vertex. So find the vertex. They want us to find the dimension, so we need to find the length and the width. The H coordinate, or the X coordinate, is opposite of B divided by 2 times A if the function is in general form, and it is. The B is in front of the X, 50, so negative 50. The A is in front of the X squared, so 2 times negative 1. 50 divided by 2, negative 50 over negative 2, 25. This is the X coordinate. So the X coordinate is representing the length. So you have a maximum area when the length is 25 yards. Now, how do you find the, the width? It's, it is not the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is the area. So if you substitute in 25 into the function, that will tell you the maximum area. So if you do that, you will find out it's um, 50 times 25 minus 25 squared. which comes out to be 625. This is the area, so it's yards squared. 625 yards squared is the y-coordinate. That doesn't answer the question. We still need to find out the width. The width is 50 subtract x. We found out x is 25 if you want the maximum area. So the width is also 25 yards. So if you want the maximum area, the length is 25 yards, the width is 25 yards. And that's it. So 25 yards for the length, 25 yards for the width. And that, those are the dimensions that gives you the most area. The reason why they're asking you to find the maximum is because this graph would open down. The A is negative 1. So the graph would open down as a frown. And the maximum would be the vertex. And we found out the vertex is 25 comma 625. Okay, so there's one application of finding the vertex, optimizing the area of a field. Here's another application, and this will finish up the section. Projectile motion. You have an object that is fired straight up in the air from a height of six feet, that's the original height, and the initial velocity, so how fast is the object traveling initially? 32 feet per second. The height of the object after t seconds is given by a quadratic function in general form. So part one, determine the maximum height obtained by the object and at what time the projectile is at its maximum height. So why are they asking us about the maximum height? It's because this general, the quadratic function in general form, the A is negative 16. 
And we know the A in quadratic functions determines the shape. So the graph will open down as a frown. And so the vertex is a maximum. So that's why they're asking us about the maximum height. So where does the maximum height occur? The vertex. So let's find the vertex. Vertex is h comma k. The h, since the function is in general form, the h is opposite of b divided by 2 times a. b, 32, so negative 32, divided by 2 times a, which is negative 16. So it looks like h is 1. Negative 32 divided by negative 32. That answers the second part of the problem. At what time is the projectile at its maximum height? The h is representing the x-coordinate, or in this case, the t. So the maximum height occurs after one second. After being fired. Now to find the maximum height, find the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is representing height of the projectile. So it's height at 1 second, negative 16 times 1 squared, plus 32 times 1, plus 6. And the maximum height turns out to be 22 feet. Make sure you include units. So the maximum height occurs after one second and is 22 feet. Okay, that's the first part. Find the maximum height and the time for the maximum height. Second part. After how many seconds will the projectile that's fired hit the ground? So let's carry forward what we had in the last problem. The function was negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 6. What would be the height if you're on the ground? Zero. So zero is the height if you're on the ground if the projectile is on the ground. This gives you a quadratic equation. And we need to solve for at, or solve for t. So this is kind of like finding the x-intercept. It would be a t-intercept this time. So how do you want to solve this? Factoring or quadratic formula? Factoring probably will be AC method, so let's use quadratic formula. It'll be t equals opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared to track 4ac divided by 2 times a. The b's 32, so negative 32, plus or minus, square root, b squared, 32 squared, minus 4 times a, negative 16, times c, 6. All divided by 2 times a, 2 times negative 16. So negative 32, plus or minus, square root. The number that you get inside the square root, which we know is called the discriminant, is 1,408. Divided by negative 32. 
So we've seen this before. There's going to be two different solutions. One is with plus square root 1408 divided by negative 32. And that's going to be approximately something. And the other answer is with the subtraction square root 1408 divided by negative 32. Now this is an application problem, so make sure that your answers make sense in terms of the problem, context of the problem. Negative 32 plus the square root of 1,408 divided by negative 32. This is first one is approximately 0, negative point 0.17, and this is in seconds because of the t. You cannot have the object hit the ground in the past. You can't have a time that's less than zero, so that cannot be the answer. Let's see if the other one does make sense. So change the square root to a negative. This one is about 2.17 seconds. That makes much more sense. So after the object has been fired, it will hit the ground about 2.17 seconds after being fired. And that answers the question. So I hope that this video has helped as you have learned quadratic functions, their graphs, and some applications involving finding the maximum and the minimum. If you have any questions about any of the problems that we worked through the notes, please let me know. Or as you work through the homework on my math lab, let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you at the next video.